Welcome back to another edition of Coffee Time. Today we're going to talk about another web curation tool, and that's RSS feeds. Now, there are a lot of things out there, a lot of uh, programs out there that you could use to uh, pull in the feeds from various blogs that you might want to read. I personally use Google Reader, um, and so we're going to look at that today. But uh, I want you to think about the fact that uh, how you can, again, use the web to pull information to you. Not that you have to go out and find it and look for it all the time, but that you've put tools in place, like Digo that we talked about in another video, um, and in this case, RSS feeds, tools in place that will allow the web to send information to you, making it so much easier for you to find what it is that you need. So, uh, if you will grab a cup of coffee, we'll get started talking about Google Reader. One of the things that, that I believe, and it's just a personal opinion of mine, you're free to disagree, one of the things that I believe that teachers and administrators should do is continually be bombarded with information related to things that are of interest to them, not only in education, but outside continue to be well read. The internet, the web, makes this so incredibly easy with a tool like Google Reader or another RSS feed. When people write blogs or when businesses are creating blogs, um, they have this feed, this RSS code, that readers will continually go out and look for and find the ones that you've subscribed to. And the, the beautiful part about the web is I don't have to go out looking, continuing to look for things of interest. I have things coming to me. And I find them through Facebook, through Twitter, through professional development that I've been to. Um, and I put them into Google Reader. So you'll see I have this tile right here for Google Reader in my Symbaloo page because I go here every single morning. Uh, one of the first things I look at in the morning is my Google Reader feed. And this will tell me over here on the left-hand side in this left-hand column, you will see all of the blogs that I subscribe to and the ones that are in bold are the ones that I have not read yet. It will tell me here at the top that I have 14 blogs that I have not read, 14 new posts. And up in the top in the URL uh, where it says Google Reader in parentheses, you'll also see 14. So it keeps up with how many is there. I try to read this every day, so my goal is to keep it at zero as often as possible. Now, what I do is I just come over and I click all items, and it will rearrange in this window, and it will bring up just the ones that I have not read as of this point. And I can use this little arrow over here on the right to scroll between headlines. And I look for things that are of interest to me, things that I might want to read, uh, and, I, and I'm reading things related to education, related to leadership. I'm interested specifically in language arts, um, in photography, in, um, in places to go on vacation, um, Discovery Educator Network, other kinds of blogs. I have a wide variety of things that I'm interested in reading, and so they're all in here. Um, and as I go through, when I find one that I want to read, I just click on the title and it will open up in a new window and allow me to read the entire post. Now, through Twitter and through other places, I find new things occasionally that I want to look at. And so here's one that I've not subscribed to yet called App, uh, App Advice. And it will tell me um, when apps in the App Store are free. And so I want to know that. I want that to come to me. I don't want to have to go searching for it. So I'm going to take this, uh, this uh, blog and I'm going to add it to my reader. There are a couple of ways that I can do that. Um, one is that if I take this all the way down and I'm just going to kind of uh, get back down to the nitty gritty URL appadvice.com, click enter. Here is the main page. And so I could do this one of two ways. I can go back to Google Reader and I can click over here on the left under subscribe and I can put this uh, in here and I can click add. That's a lot of work. I have to go find Google Reader again when I'm reading something else. Maybe I don't want to do that. I have installed 
through the Google Reader site, this little button right here that says subscribe. And so anytime I'm on a website that I want to keep track of, I can just click subscribe right here. It will open Google Reader for me. It will say, you're not subscribed yet. I want to click subscribe. And now I have subscribed to App Advice, and it's going to add, uh, right here you'll see it, it's going to add the last 10 posts um, that I have missed that I can go back in and look at. You'll see that my reader is updated to 23 now uh, because I've already read one earlier. Um, and so by using something like Google Reader, I have access to the latest information from websites that I'm interested in coming to me every day. And so it can get out of hand in a hurry. Don't get me wrong. If you don't read it for a day or two, you might come back and find a hundred updates, depending on how many things you're following. So be selective. Find the things that are really of interest to you. Keep up to date. Read it often. So after the break, we'll come back and we'll talk about a couple of things that you might want to do with this in the classroom. Um, and we hope that you'll stick with us. Okay, so we've looked just briefly at Google Reader and how to put things into Google Reader. The question is, how do I use this in the classroom? There are a couple of quick things to think about. Um, number one is, uh, you should probably be blogging. As a teacher, as, as an administrator, as a teacher, I think blogging is one of the ways that you think through uh, what it is that you're trying to do with your educational experience, what it is you're trying to do with your philosophy of education. And you can certainly help your students by blogging yourself. And so one thing to do in the classroom is to set up a blog for yourself where you are posting things maybe just a couple of times a week, maybe just once a week, um, about your class, about things that you want to happen in the class, maybe giving some information about an assignment with links to various websites you want the kids to go to. Have the kids set up their own reader, whether it's Google Reader or blog feed or whatever it is they want to use that they can go to on their iPads or on their MacBooks or their PCs or even on their phones. And as you update things, you don't have to tell them, hey, I updated my blog. Everybody go out and read it tonight. They're going to know. It's going to come to them automatically. And they will have access to your thoughts and your opinions and the things that you're writing about in your classroom. In addition to that, and whenever possible, I would strongly encourage you to have your students blog. Now, you know, in an elementary classroom where you're dealing with maybe 15 to 25 kids, that's not a neat, that's not a difficult thing to do. Middle school and high school where you have 135 to 150 kids, that's a lot of blogs to read. Um, and so, you need to think through how you're going to do that. Perhaps um, you, know, you work with other teachers at your school so that the English teacher is not encouraging kids to blog and the math teacher wants them to set up another blog and the science teacher wants them to set another blog, but work together um, as a faculty to set up expectations of students and what you want them to do. But whenever you have your students writing, and they're thinking through their education. Maybe you're giving them a question to respond to just once a week. And they write about that question online. And they have an authentic audience of people out there who are reading and commenting, whether it's other students or other teachers. But then you set up um, your own reader uh, in, a, in a feed and all of those student blogs come to you at one time. Students don't have to turn them in. Um, you know, they don't have to email you and bombard your email box. But as they write, maybe one student writes Monday, another student writes Thursday. As they write, those things come to you 
and you can read them and comment and, and begin to work through um, those kinds of things with your students where they are meshing out their own ideas about the world and about how to work through things. Um, and then maybe you want to share those blogs with other teachers that are in your Twitter feed or on your Facebook page or uh, other ways that you want to put those out there so that um, other teachers can come in and comment on your student blogs. Um, we do this quite often on Twitter. I have uh, people who send out a tweet and say, here's a blog by a new student, please comment. And they will have comments from 20 or 25 teachers before the day is over from around the world who have read their blog. That makes them want to write even more. So by either you setting up your own blog or your students setting up blogs that you read, or maybe both, um, you can begin to see the need that you need to pull these things in to your own satisfaction to read. Google Reader is a great way to do that. Uh, and so if you need help setting that up, be sure and send me an email. We'll, we'll work with you any way we can. Um, and we hope that you enjoy um, putting together a list of things that are of interest to you um, and that will come to you and help you grow as an individual. Until next time. Have a cup of coffee on me.